In this video, we'll learn about the key aims of government macroeconomic policy for inflation, the balance of payments, exchange rates, unemployment, growth, and development. Governments can use economic policy to maintain price stability. An acceptable rate of inflation is around 2%. Some central banks use inflation targeting of 2% to drive monetary policy. The Bank of England and the U.S. Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, both target 2% inflation. This is because 2% inflation is generally accepted as a sign of a healthy economy. Price stability supports long-run decision-making for both individuals and firms. On the Bank of England website, they explain that in order to keep inflation low and stable, the government sets us an inflation target of 2%. This helps everyone plan for the future. If inflation is too high or it moves around a lot, it's hard for businesses to set the right prices and for people to plan their spending. But if inflation is too low or negative, then some people may put off spending because they expect prices to fall. Although lower prices sounds like a good thing, if everybody reduced their spending, then companies could fail and people might lose their jobs. Next up is stability on the balance of payments. But before delving into this objective, it is worth pointing out that a current account deficit is often used interchangeably with a trade deficit. They are not exactly the same thing as a current account consists of the trade balance and also primary and secondary income. A trade deficit exists when the value of exports is less than the value of imports. A current account deficit exists when the sum of the three components is in deficit. However, in most economies, the trade balance is the largest component and will determine whether the current account is in deficit or surplus. So with that said, let's continue. Economies will try to avoid persistent, long-term current account deficits and surpluses. We'll first consider deficits. In the short run, current account deficits may be acceptable if the country is importing capital and resources that will support long-term growth. However, in the long run, the story can be quite different. According to the World Bank Open Knowledge Repository, a current account deficit in itself is neither good nor bad. It is likely to be unsustainable and lead to harmful consequences when it is persistently large, fuels consumption rather than investment, occurs alongside excessive domestic credit growth, follows an overvalued exchange rate, or accompanies unrestrained fiscal deficits. And it's also worth noting that a current account deficit may also be of concern if it is financed by external borrowing or if it is reflective of non-competitive domestic products. A current account surplus is usually portrayed as beneficial, but can also cause issues for an economy. It could lead to exchange rate appreciation and strengthen the domestic currency, eventually impacting the quantity of exports and negatively impacting the export industry. Additionally, a current account surplus may indicate the country is over-reliant on export-led growth. This could leave them susceptible to shocks in the global economy. If there is an economic crisis in the economy of a major trading partner, it can severely reduce demand for the exporting country's products. A current account surplus could also be indicative of low levels of domestic consumption. Sustained high demand for a country's exports could also increase export prices and inflationary pressure could negatively impact global price competitiveness. It's also worth noting that a country that is developing its export industry at the expense of some of its trading partners may cause political tension with them. A financial account surplus means that foreign buyers are purchasing more domestic assets than domestic buyers are purchasing of assets from the rest of the world. This will mean that interest payments and dividends being paid out to the rest of the world will increase. This will increase net primary income paid to the rest of the world in the current account. A financial account surplus can be beneficial if FDI flows are entering the country and creating jobs and reducing unemployment. However, increasing FDI also results in increasing demand for the domestic currency and can cause it to appreciate in foreign exchange markets, potentially having an adverse impact on exports. The third objective is exchange rate stability. Countries that operate fixed exchange rates will have to actively intervene to manage the value of their currency. 
Their intervention may cause their currency to be stronger or weaker globally. A benefit of a weaker currency would be to promote export-led growth. Also, countries operating a freely floating exchange rate would prefer to avoid wild swings in the value of their currency. The reasons are similar in that it creates a more stable international trading environment. The fourth aim is for full employment. Most governments will aim for full employment. This is generally between 3 to 5% unemployment, with frictional unemployment being acceptable, as there will always be some workers between jobs. Macroeconomic policy will focus on addressing cyclical and structural unemployment. Boosting aggregate demand should help reduce cyclical unemployment. As for structural unemployment, different strategies will be needed, such as retraining and providing opportunities to individuals to develop new skills. Long-term unemployment is a major concern for an economy because workers can lose their skills if they are unemployed for a long time, and there is also the concern that they may drop out of the labor force. To maintain its highest productive potential and capacity, a government will aim to maximize the capabilities of its labor force. Fifth is aiming for economic growth and development. Most economies pursue strategies for long-term economic growth and sustainable development. Economic growth should increase job opportunities, incomes, and thus living standards. Higher incomes will encourage spending on a wider range of goods and services, and both households and firms will be better off. Economic development will ensure that growth can be sustained over generations, and that individuals enjoy a higher quality of life with respect to the environment, better health care, and improved education provision. By now, you should have a better understanding of the key macroeconomic policy aims for inflation, the balance of payments, exchange rates, unemployment, growth, and development. If you have any questions, leave them below and let's try and answer them together. That's us done for now, and I will see you in the next one.